you know, well-deserved winner of Content Creator of the Month. There's Amen. Very well. So many, so many different flavors. So many different flavors in our community to give different levels of information depending where we're all at. And our, our community who have been on the journey for a long time love those deep dive threads and the analytical side of not having to work that stuff out for yourself or even try and come close. So appreciate you. Appreciate you, bro. Good stuff. Well, and I think I think when you look at the last two content creators, you know, Helen and Kona, uh, they exist very much at, at opposite ends of the kind of content creation spectrum. Um, you know, one being far more entertaining, um, one being far more informative. So I guess it's uh, just a, a point to make that content doesn't have to have, you know, one specific format that it fits into <clears throat> to be con considered eligible in this category um you know we encourage people of all sorts and uh, all different capabilities and abilities to um you know produce content that entertains or enlightens or educates um both our existing community and the broader ecosystem does that mean that uh 30 minutes max and by the way hi everyone welcome to 30 minutes max I mean, 30 minutes max doesn't qualify for the content creator award, and I possibly, I can't get a poda for doing this. I mean, it's, it's who would get the poda though, me or you? <laughs> well, I'm asking, I'm asking the questions on behalf of the community, and as the voice of the community right now, asking you questions in just a moment. Oh, uh, yeah, let's let's put it up for grabs. Okay, Alex, we're going to get into this. Um, one thing I get to see Alex every day, but we don't often get to hang out. Um, so I'm going to take this opportunity to hang out, Alex, because we've got a lot to talk about. And mm -hmm. I'm going to start firing through these questions. But before I do, is there anything you'd like to start off with this week? Um, oh, I mean, it's a good question. Honestly, there's so much going on. Um, there's always so much news coming out, both from within the ecosystem and more broadly. Um, I guess... I mean, no, honestly, I don't think there's anything else really to address. I think there's a lot of questions that have come through. Um, I once, as always, you know, I appreciate the enthusiasm um, that this community has. And I know at times, you know, people can um, get very passionate about certain questions and uh, information that they're seeking the answer to. You know, we obviously see it all. Um, we're not actively trying to hide you know anything that should be public information but we have we are a very big company there's a lot of different processes that we're working through to make sure that all information is released at the right time um in the right order um so appreciate your patience i you know appreciate the sheer passion and curiosity and excitement that happens within this community as well um and we as always will endeavor to answer as many questions as we can through this process. So I guess without further ado, shall we jump straight into things? Yep, let's get straight into it. Okay, we're starting off with the sends, burn to <laughs> mint. Right, how long roughly will root payout from send swap take once the cycle ends on the 31st-ish? Um, yeah, so I, I, all I can say would, is what was stated in the announcement, which is that it will be paid out in the coming days. So it's uh, it's a reasonably short timeline on that one. Um, especially considering how much root is being paid out as well. And it also says in here, concerns about people exploiting the sins burn. Is there a way they can do that? Yeah, I mean, this is something that we saw raised multiple times. Um, I think what they're basically saying is that people are able to set up multiple wallets um, to take advantage of the different tranches and the way that that's structured. I mean, we don't see this as an exploit. Um, the rules were clearly defined and open for anyone to to play as they see fit. Um, it's something that, you know, we could have explored putting a lot more time in place to, to put protections on, but it's just not something that, um, you know, is worth us dedicating those resources to when we look at everything else that we are delivering across the board. Um, so especially considering in this case as well, the subscription level for this first cycle was not, you know, massively above and beyond, um, the, the available threshold. So yeah, it's not something that we really see as a concern, to be honest. Great. If that's not a concern, we've got a question here about Mark and all questions are about Mark, a third party. So what is our answer <laughs> about Mark? I mean, yeah, this is one that seems to come up every week. Look, I understand and I can really appreciate the um, frustrations around user experience with Mark um, and especially when you, you know, hold it up against other 
kind of top tier marketplaces that we're we're used to working with. Um, but I need to remind people that firstly, Mark is a third party marketplace um, that they also you know, took the risk of building a marketplace for the root network when we are still very early days and had very little network activity. Um, you know, it's not something that, uh, you know, a major marketplace will dedicate resources to until they see the actual return for their investment to, to that. So, you know, if it wasn't for Mark, then, then we would be in an even worse position. Um, but that said, you know, as we've... Um, touched on many times, we're always in conversations with both, you know, existing marketplaces and and new people looking at building marketplaces, uh, marketplace solutions for the root network. Um, we published a blog, um, the first of many, on our various pallets on the root network, um, which touches on the various components of our marketplace pallets and how they actually facilitate um, smoother development of marketplaces on the root network. Um, so we expect to see a lot more coming down this pipeline as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, I can, I can appreciate the frustrations around Mark, but it's also important to remember that, you know, a, um, a poor experience is better than no experience at all. Yeah. And, uh, on Mark, I'm sure we'll see better things around the corner. I mean, we're too great an ecosystem to not want to be a part of, so I oh. can't see that being a problem. Now, I know there's a lot, I know there's a lot more coming from Mark itself, but there's also a lot more coming from outside of Mark. So, um, you know, at a low, it's all going to be okay. These things just take time. Uh, yep. Head off to the um, platform team as well for uh, getting those docs out. That was. Is that you typing? Can we mute that hot mic, please? It's resistance, I think. Okay. I wish I could type like that. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> uh, Okay, so as we move on, ah, yes, the Vortex. I like this one because I'm starting to think of the Vortex as more of like a, a basket of on net network value. I, I love it. Um, so the question is, is it possible to contribute to Vortex simply by sending to the address? Um, this is actually a really good question. Um, something that I raised internally, obviously, with the, the kickoff of the um, fungible token um, palette and you know the ability for people to very easily launch their own fungible tokens on the root network. Um, I, I've raised it internally. In terms of the current structure, it's not that clear cut that you can basically just send tokens to that address and have them distributed with Vortex, but it is something that we are exploring. Um, it's because I mean you know it's a it's a good mechanic for people to kind of bootstrap their community uh, distribution for new tokens as well. Um, so not currently, but stay tuned. That's something we're definitely looking into. All right, the next one, Unarapati. I know nothing about this. If you want to give some backstory to why this track is being mentioned in our questions, Alex, I'd be interested to know as well. So, oh, I mean. Yeah. So yeah, so question, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, it was any updates on the Run Rabbit full track. So Run Rabbit was one of the OG songs from the Fluff World Collection produced by a friend of Jesse and mine um, who goes by the artist name Fairfields. Or those of you in New Zealand might know him as Tom Lee, one half of Lee Matthews, the drum and bass duo. Um, this is one of the songs he produced for us and in our community. Absolutely loved it and we're asking for a full version. Um, it was, I think it was shelved and definitely just because there was some stuff around the publishing that what we couldn't get finalized, but it's certainly something I can follow back up on and see um, if that's something we can still bring to the world. Let's, just for the culture, Alex, for the culture, let's see if we can get it of back. Course. Of course. All right, let's hope, hopefully all these questions stay along those sort of happy vibe. Let's go. Is there a possibility, <laughs> is there a possibility open could be multi-chain or is it solely T of the root network, especially given its name is open? Um, I mean, so firstly, at the moment, I think it's important to um, establish that I am not in a position to speak on behalf of Readyverse Studios or open. Um, but what I can say is that while our focus is building everything on the root network, our vision has always been for interoperability in as many facets as possible. And that includes, you know, cross-chain compatibility. Um, we obviously want to incentive, incentivize uh, as much activity as possible happening on the root network. But I think when it comes to 
the grand vision of an open metaverse and mass interoperability. Um, it shouldn't have to be a requirement in every case for people to take everything directly over to the root network if they're kind of playing in this this open realm. Yeah, another realm which is not going to get an answer is the third kingdom and the prism questions. That's all it says here. And I mean, leading before you came up onto stage, Alex, I actually said anything regarding like gameplay, like where do I put my prism for best results? It's mm -hmm. just going to fall in the bu fall in the bucket of you're ruining the experience for yourself. Stop asking the question. So um, <laughs> it just says it just says third kingdom questions. Well, here. that's that's just the title of the entire next section. Oh, I don't. <laughs> okay, the little I'm going in. All right. What what happens to the route from the prism sale? Um, it goes to the people selling the products, us, just like any other sale. In a scenario where there are unlimited vouchers, or unlimited vouchers, sorry, did the team consider fractionalizing those and distributing them amongst the participants rather than keeping them for the team? Um, I mean, no, this would kind of work directly against our goal of seeing the sales be as successful as possible because people would therefore be incentivized to not take uh, part in the sale to the same extent because they would receive an increase in vouchers based on those that are left over. So, I mean, it's important to remember that we've already outlined a massive prize pool for this season alone. Um, so it doesn't make any sense for us to disincentivize the, the sale actually performing well. Yeah. And also another reason the people on the team don't come to me to ask the math questions. We've got people who are great at them. I'm not one. How will liquidity for Prisma vouchers work? Um, so same way that any liquidity pool works for any token pairing on a Dexter. Um, it's up to the community or anyone else who's willing or who wants to take advantage of um, the commissions available for being a liquidity provider. Okay, moving on. Can we talk about whether any additional partners may be incorporated into TTK season one between now and when the game launches? Um, we're always open to new partners and our partnerships team are always, you know, in, uh, very busy talking to all sorts of different partners. But um, I think this seems to be something that I have to reiterate every single week and that I'm never going to reveal confidential partnership conversations. Um, that's just not how this works. It's not how any business works. Um, when we, we will bring more partnerships um, to light as they when as and when they're ready to come to light and the comms plans and rollout plans have been agreed with those respective partners. Um, but I guess to the, the broader kind of question, you know, this is all open metaverse, interoperability. We're always open to having more friends along for the ride. Touche. I can see this this question doesn't have an answer, but I'm going to read it anyway. Did you consider having a recharge capability for a Gen 1 exotic prism? I don't even know what that means, dude. I have no uh, idea what that means. I mean, yeah, I don't, like, once again, this is, we're not going to change our whole game strategy or have people dictate our game strategy for us. I read that and I realize I don't have enough game strategy going on. I'm well <laughs> behind the curve. Okay. Where is his SS in this next question? That does stand for scenes and sounds, doesn't it? No, it's surreal scapes. Okay, trying to keep up. What's happening? What happens if surreal escapes were playing? One more time. What happens if surreal escapes were playing on is listed for sale and sells? Do the prisms we put it okay? Do the prisms we put on it are whisked away with the buyer to the buyer's wallet, or do they become stranded yeah. in ours? <laughs> That's a really hard one to read, guys. It's, wow. I mean, you, you missed a few key words in that one. So, oh. what happens if, if a surreal scape we're playing on is listed for sale and sells? Do the prisms we have put on it also get whisked away to the buyer's wallet, or do they become stranded in ours? Um, 
Yes, I mean, this is a good question. It's something that we can't confirm at this stage, but we will address in all the relevant info um, we release when it comes to the game launch. Um, a lot of this sort of stuff, like when we actually get closer to, to launching the game, we'll release all this sort of information. I'm not, I'm not really sure why I'm actually reading these. Regarding TTK, could you provide us with a current game that has similar mechanics to what is expected to TTK? That's... I know what I'd uh, like it to be. I mean, no, I, I can't provide you with any additional information other than what's already been officially shared publicly. Just stay tuned for, for more official comms. Okay. Right. Uh, will each subsequent season utilise the same surreal escapes and just replenish the rewards elements and start over? If yes, will additional surreal escapes be available in future seasons or are the available Surreal Escapes the only Surreal Escapes for all the Third Kingdom seasons? So Surreal Escapes can be used across subsequent seasons, um, but there's potential for the Surreal Escapes collection to expand as the Third Kingdom evolves. Um, in terms of the resource component itself, um, I once again, I can't go into game mechanics. This is something we can go into. Can you confirm the prize pool is up to 312.5 million root, the ceiling, but mm -hmm. also could be less? Uh, yes, you know, it, it requires active participation to earn your piece of the prize pool, which is why we can't give a definitive number here. You know, this, like take, take an extreme example here. If one person played the third kingdom for one day only that wouldn't mean that they get the entire prize pool so if it's dictated by participation both on the individual and on the kind of full community level sorry i was just listening along there learning learning as i go okay does the prize pool have a floor how do you feel about that question um, I mean, this, this is the same thing, like right. there's no floor because once again, it requires active participation. If no one plays the game, then no one gets anything. All right, let's go back to casually hanging out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what date will season one begin? What date will it end? How long is the season? <laughs> this, this, like FAQs exist for a reason, guys. This has already been addressed in the FAQs, but to reiterate, the length of the first season has not been confirmed yet, and but it may be dictated by user engagement. I feel we've answered this next one already as well. What will if the uh, what will Futurist do with unsold prisms? I mean, we're selling yeah, them. They, so. they go, they go, no, they go back to us. Yeah. Um, will non-premium prisms be available for purchase before season one ends? Uh, I don't believe so, but I can't confirm that at this stage. When can we see gameplay? <laughs> uh, uh, when we're ready to release gameplay. <laughs> will Come this on, be guys. PC or mobile or both? I mean, our main focus is PC, but we're exploring all options. Um, do resources include assets with current or future utility and other partner projects? Will non futureverse assets influence gamified results? I Big one. don't really understand the second part of that question. Um, and once again, you know, we're not going to reveal all of the gameplay dynamics up front. Otherwise, what's the point in even playing the game? Um, it's important that we let this roll out organically rather than telling you how, re how every single component will work. One thing I will touch on, though, and we've, we've discussed a bit already, is how uh, the Third Kingdom kickstarts the material world system, which we're introducing, which is not only um, in use for our first-party games, but also serves as a means for third-party game developers to bootstrap their game economies using an established resource economy. Right. Okay. Do resources include assets with current or oh sorry moving on what are the what are the ttk hardware requirements will it be a 2d or 3d experience that's a good question What's uh, a, what first hardware point, do we need? once again please read the faqs this has already been addressed in the faqs um we do not have definitive hardware requirements yet but we will release them when we do 
as for the game experience, you're going to have to wait and see. Yep. With proper utilization of collectibles like fuzzies, thingies, they didn't say seekers. I'm going to add seekers because you can't leave <laughs> seekers out. Might it be possible to optimize the efficiency of a single prism so that it harvests as much or more than two or three? I feel like I, I feel like I need a copy paste answer here. We're not um, going to reveal the game mechanics. Just play the game. I went back to my first one. What did it say right back at the beginning? It said something, questions. I'm going to go back and, uh, yeah. Just move on. Okay. What will be happening with Untamed Isles? Oh, sorry, Future yeah, First TV. Well, I missed a bunch there. Sorry, you've, mate. You've missed like 10 there. Yeah. Okay. Will companions like Seekers and Buzzies be used and relevant in TTK or open or both? So once again, as already stated in the FAQs and on the website, Seekers, Buzzies and Thingies all have a role to play within the Third Kingdom. Please read the FAQs before asking the same questions again and again and again. As for open, once again, I can't give any details about open at this stage, but the whole idea is of the open metaverse is that everyone can get involved. Okay. The reason we get lost is because all these questions are the same. Lots of new friends, but there have been any discussions with RTFKT team? Artifact. Um, once again, I can't discuss partnership conversations which haven't already been made public. This is not the point of this AMA. Okay. Hi. Can you share an update <laughs> on where things are with the Futureverse Foundation and whether Alexander and Keanu are still advisors? Um, yeah, this was actually raised in the last 30 minutes, Max. Um, I've raised it. I've gone back to the team just to get um, some updates from them. Uh, I can't give any updates just yet, but I know they are working on some updates and we'll post those through official channels um, when they're ready. Great. Hi, can you share an update on where things are with Futureverse? Oh, no, sorry. Given the popularity of the races with young people, is there Futureverse only for 21 and over still? I don't think it was ever our plan that Futureverse was only for people 21 and over. Um, I would say that the current mark, Web3 market and the speculative trading that comes along with it all is something that should only be engaged with by adults. Um, but our ambitions has always been far beyond, you know, the current market trends. Um, and especially when it comes to gaming itself, you know, it's it's definitely not a 21 and over um, field. These are big questions, man. Can you comment if we're still on track to onboard millions of users in 2024? Comments? Um yeah, I mean, that's the goal. Um, we have a lot rolling out this year, especially ones that are targeted more towards mainstream mass adoption. So, you know, that's always been the goal. Uh, we've got a question regarding what shit coins you've been degening and have you been uh, in uh, the Telegram groups with the soul, soul dudes or what's going on? Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't have time for that anymore. I had a, I had a brief little play a, a couple months ago as things were kicking off again, but and I'm far too busy with everything we're building currently to, to do any of that DJ and stuff. Yeah, I'm feeling really satisfied with where I am at the end of my week. And it's kind of like I've taken everything off my list of things to do. And then I look through this list. It's like, okay, can you talk about AFA and Jen at, at all? Just at all. Uh, and Q1 releases have been pushed back. Question mark. Um, well, yeah, obviously, Jen was an originally planned to come live at the end of Q1, um, which hasn't happened. There's some key updates that are happening in the background. Um, but once again, I'm not in a position to to kind of front run any official comms on that. There'll be some updates coming through the official Jen channels soon enough. Um, and same answer for AFA. Yep. And uh, how about Futureverse TV? Any episodes coming up? Um, anything we'd expect? Some deep dives? Yeah, Futurist TV, um, we've got a new um, format that we're working on for that. Um, I know it's uh, had to be pushed back a couple of times just with how much has been going on and things like South by Southwest and all these other um, things popping up. And, um, you know, there's only so many hours in a day that people like Aaron and Shara and Mark are available. Um, 
so yeah it's definitely still um on the horizon hopefully we'll get uh, a date set for that pretty soon yeah we're getting our time back with them again too where they catch up with the whole team so i'm sure you guys will be getting a catch up soon as well okay i like this next question because i haven't heard about this for a while what's happening with untamed isles um, so that through part of the roll up, one of the companies that was involved in the roll up had a uh, first party IP game and development called Untamed Isles. Um, it's not currently a priority for us. We have plenty of previous commitments that we are con uh, continuing to deliver on, um, but at the appropriate time, we'll take another look at it. Right. Will Futureverse be at NFT NYC this year? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's literally happening right now, I'm pretty sure. Um, tomorrow is the last day in the US. Um, so some of our partnership team are there. Um, if you are there, feel free to reach out to Gio. Um, I know he's on the ground there. Um, although he's fairly busy, but he might have time to catch up or, you know, if you want to invite him along to an event that you're part of, um, yeah, reach out to him directly. Yeah, another great event, lots of people there. Um, we've got questions about tokenomics now, Alex, and the schedule. So rather than reading any more, I might just hand it yeah. over to you to paraphrase and get into. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is something that seems to get raised every single week and the the same, as I've stated many times, this is something that we're working on. We will provide more clarity um, as soon as we are able to appreciate the patients here. Um, We've already confirmed the start date for the community rewards pool. Um, we will, we're still working through the process with our legal advisors just to make sure that all the other pools and schedules around them are properly defined. Nothing's changing against the white paper. We just want to make sure that we're doing it all by the books. Um, as uh, the person asking this question pointed out, there was some funds that were had been moved out of one of the um pools erroneously um this is something that's being tidied up as we finalize um all of these components and make sure that that's all locked and scheduled correctly um i can appreciate there's you know some frustration or confusion around this um but i and, and some of you you know might see this as another trust us bro moment um but i think it's pretty fair to say that we've earned a certain level of trust from you at the stage and you know, we're not doing anything disingenuous. We're not doing anything dodgy. We are just making, in fact, the reason we haven't been able to give defin definitive answers here yet is because we're ensuring through our legal advisors that we are doing everything by the books. So, you know, it's, it's not in our interest to, to do anything incorrectly here. Um, we have put an insane amount of time and effort and energy and building Futureverse into what it is. Um, so we're going to make sure that we do it all properly. Yeah, I can testify. Everyone is working really, really, really hard. I'm up to my last question. And after that, if anyone's got any questions to come up, how are you for time before I ask this question? Alex, can you run on a bit? Uh, yeah, I can run on a little bit. I've, it seems like there might be a few people that want to jump up and ask questions um, live as well. So, yeah, I can uh, I can stay on for a bit longer. Cool. All right. When will CoinGecko show our circulating supply? It's uh, questionable. It's not shown at present. Um. This is once again, a Coin Gecko is a third party. We have no control over what they do. We provided all the relevant information to them, just as we did with Coin Market Cap. Coin Market Cap acted quickly and updated um, to real time circulating supply. Coin Gecko didn't for whatever reason. It's not our place to dictate what they focus on. Um, they'll get to it when they get to it. Yes, they will. If they do it all, but. The floor is open now, guys. Jump up if you've got some questions, please. Hello. Oh, no, you can yeah. ask your question. All right, all right. Um, so it was mentioned in the recent marketplace docs that there's actually 23 pallets um, that the team have been working on. Is there any information out there or um, access to what those pallets, <clears throat> what those pallets might be? If not, um, uh, when would we likely see more of those? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, so a lot of those um, have, uh, there's already public information uh, for 
in our developer documents. Um, some, you know, like the Dex palette, for example, which is what drives our um, on-chain, uh, our any token gas economy. Um, and something, I've, you know, just to highlight here as well, which I think some people don't realize is any uh, decentralized exchange using our Dex palette, um, it all feeds into the same liquidity pools. So we currently have two Dexes on the root network, one being Dexter, the other being Moai. Um, Dexter uses our native Dex palette, whereas Moai has built their own um, using on EVM. So it doesn't actually use our Dex palette and feed the any token gas economy. But for example, if another Dex was to launch using our Dex palette, it would be the using the exact same liquidity pools that are currently utilized by Dexter and by our any token gas economy. So in that sense, it means that they're basically not competing with each other for, for the uh, liquidity. Um, there's a lot of other ones in there, um, but I guess to your point, to your question, um, this this blog that we just put out is just the first in a series, and we are planning on doing ones that address basically every single um, pallet and custom runtime that we have built for the root network. Yeah, it was amazing to read through it um, because as someone who loves to understand things, um, it it's right up my alley um, to read all that. Um, one with the Dex palette that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. if um, say Dexter has made that and someone else comes in, what is the incentive then to build a front end if it's all just the one Dex? Um, well, so it's, I mean, I guess people have already raised uh, concerns and frustrations with the front end of. Dexter in that, um, although it obviously gives, you know, estimates of what your return will be and that's, you know, there's an element of user responsibility when it comes to making trades on low liquidity pools, there's certainly uh, UX improvements that can be <clears throat> made there to make that a, a better user experience. And I think as always, when it comes to like an open market, um, the products with the best user experience will attract the most users. Um, I think one thing to note is that Dex, I don't believe, currently actually takes any fees. Um, but if you were to produce, basically, if you were to like fork Dexter, for example, um, and build in additional features, additional functionality, better user experience, you know that that in of itself could very much justify, you know, charging fees against it because people would prefer to go to the place that has a better user experience. The evidence of this is in Moai. Moai has higher fees as a Dex than Dexter currently, but um, you know the general consensus from the community seems to be that Moai has a better user experience and thus lots of people use it despite the fact that it has higher fees. No, that makes perfect sense. So the idea would be that um, someone building a, a Dex palette, they could add in the front end UI that if I was to trade on their one over Dexter, it could be a small fee um, yeah. for supporting them instead of Dexter, which is... Yeah, so, um, so we've, we've built the palette in the background, which helps, you know, run all the... Uh, uh, helps manage all the trade and, and has the established uh, liquidity pools and all that sort of stuff. But the front end itself is where they can focus on user experience and fees and all sorts of other things that can... Uh, incentivize or draw users to it um, over competition. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Um, I can see how someone might, because they're saving time, they don't have to worry about making actually uh, a smart contract. They're literally plugging into the Dex palette. Their focus is on just the front end. So there's like, there's a, it's just a different type of trade off and incentive model compared to building a brand new Dex like Mel. Um, yeah, that's all I've yeah. got. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cool. No worries. Yo, bro, uh, not to like fish for alpha, but while we're on this topic, I saw that uh, Shanghai, um, like, like kind of like hinting that he was going to do marketplace. Is there anything you can comment on there? Like, is there anything you know about that that you're allowed to say? That that sounds like something you should go and probe Shen for. It seems like he's pretty prone yeah, yeah, to. Yeah. To, to leaking stuff, I, it's certainly something I can't confirm or deny, but he, it seems like he's someone who could be pretty 
easily pressured into leaking info. <laughs> so feel free to to hit him up and see what other info you can get out of him. Yeah, exactly. All right, all right, my uh, turn. Yeah, I also wanted to ask you though. Um, so Aaron has been posting like these videos of like uh, characters like running around the borough. Or mm-hmm. is it? Can you like tell us what we're looking at there? Or it's fine if you just don't want to comment on that right now, but. I'm just wondering if there's anything you can share on that. I I can't share uh, anything specifically on that. I think what's important is, um, you know, we we pointed out as well with uh, the launch of Surreal Scapes that, you know, this is, isn't the end of things for Burroughs. Um, there's still a lot more to come. And, you know, Aaron, uh, it's, I quite enjoy it now. I remember in the Non-Fungible Labs days, I was always fighting Aaron because he would just go rogue and leak stuff that we weren't ready to release. But now in my role, I actually really enjoy it. So, um, yeah, I think what was teased there is is a real cool showcase of um, one of the experiences that we have to come. But I can't give any more detail on it at this stage. So. All right, honestly, I'm going to ask this last one, and it's, you said that the the route from the sale goes to the team, of course, but I guess, like, the question some people have is, like, is there any specific plans that have already been made for that that you can address? And I, and it's fine if not, but, I mean. No, no I mean, I can't, and I, we never would. Like, that's, that's uh, business operations, and that's not something that's up for public discussion. Yeah, it's fine. But I think that's my, oh my, oh, 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 wait, wait, I have one more. It's, it would be <coughs> if, if we could do a POTA giveaway to, you know, just a random, we got to have some kind of limit, you know what I mean? Like fluff holders only or something, but another like random POTA giveaway would be sick. That's the last question. Not yeah, really a question, yeah, yeah. like idea. <laughs> it's just a statement. I mean, yeah, Um, I think it's been really cool doing the POTAs through content creators of the month. And it's something that we've kind of, um struggled with i guess is how do we distribute poters in a way that's kind of rewards our most loyal holders i think there's definitely other mechanics we can look at in time but um it's that's something that we'll we'll probably have to push down the road a bit there's just too much other stuff that we're having to to focus no, that's on fine. i definitely agree though the content creator i think everyone agrees that's a really smart way to reward the right group of people yeah no, nah, it's been really cool to see. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what comes next. Well, I was always told that poters were never, they were earned. You know, no one gets given a poter. You've got to earn it. So uh, I'm still trying to earn mine. I'm grafting every day. And some takeaways there. What have we got? The first one was Shen needs to practice uh, surprise and delight. Uh, turn notifications on for Aaron because getting those leaks coming out on Twitter, that's the how we stay ahead of the curve too. Like, it just goes to show how far out in front Aaron is when he's sharing the stuff with us who are building it. So amazing. And um, time for maybe one more question from the audience. If uh, there's anyone. Yeah. Hit us up. One, two, three, no more questions. All right. Thanks, everybody. This has been 30 Minutes Max. It was an interesting show today. We basically just had to get through it, which we did. And just understand that we're working really, really hard. But if you've got any questions, put them in the 30 Minutes Max channel on the Discord for the Futureverse. Any last yeah. words, Alex? Yeah, I think, um, look, I, to address that point, um, there are a lot of questions today that probably could have been avoided altogether. I guess from my perspective, I don't want it to just seem like we're ignoring questions outright. I want <coughs> I want to make it clear that, you know, we do want to be as open as possible through this. But please, please, if you're going to ask a question, check FAQs first, because in many cases, it's already been answered. Stop asking questions about confidential partnership deals, because we're just never going to be able to answer those. Um, and also try and make your questions as concise and um, well phrased as possible so that we can go through them. We do try and go through and audit all the questions in advance, but it's not, we, we often don't have much time to do so with just the sheer amount of work that we have going on. Um, so, you know, any assistance from you guys in terms of the way that the questions are structured um, will be a massive time saver for us as well.
but yeah i appreciate it and look i know it's it can be frustrating at times there's so much going on there's a lot of um questions that people want to have answers on um it is walking this fine balance between you know trying to open uh, to operate as openly as possible while still being you know a private company um that has to operate in accordance um and also ensuring that we're not just giving all the information away up front because part of playing anything is uh, the joy of discovery throughout that process so appreciate that there's a lot of curiosity and a lot of passion um, and that's something that we we very much encourage i don't want it to feel like we're shutting any of this down um, but you know part of it is just playing the game so once again thank you all for being here thanks for being part of the community thanks for supporting us it's been a hell of a journey um i think someone pointed out that we're almost up to like three uh, sorry a thousand days since fluff mint um is coming up pretty soon which is just an insane milestone um and yeah here's to many many thousands more to come amen all right thanks everybody have a good one